is the podcast live yet? We are live. What's going on, my people? Sitting down right now listening to the People's Paradise Podcast. This is the People's Paradise Podcast. How y'all doing today? Shout out to my people listening right now. Shout out to my people listening to me right now on Periscope. My people listening to me right now on Facebook Live. My people listening to me on the podcast. How are we doing today? What's going on with my people in your house? Shout out to my man Antonio Cipriani for joining. What's going on with you, man? Shout out to Real Emmanuel H. I didn't even know niggas would be up this early on a Saturday, but cool. That's what's good. That's what's up. What's up? What's going on with you, man? So, as we wake up on a Saturday, dressed in all black, wearing scarlet red headphones, thinking about alternative facts, shout out to an imitator, imitator, I think I've, I think we've talked before, imitator, I'm trying to remember who that is, imitator on my periscope, what's going on with you baby, how you doing, yeah, we talked before, I'm sorry I forgot who you were, I know Real Manuage, Real Manuage is my photographer, my man Antonio Soprano, he's my Italian homie, Imitator, taking a med class for work. Med class for work? Oh, that's what's up. You're going to be a med student. How are you doing today? Bro, shout out to Real Man who actually cares about how I'm doing. Nobody else has asked how I'm doing today. Nobody on my Facebook Live, nobody on my Periscope, nobody on the podcast. I am doing just fine right now. I'm doing pretty good. Be right back. Cool. I'm doing pretty great right now. Woke up early in the morning, had vegan cereal. Which really, I don't know what's the point of having vegan cereal because I think most cereals in all in all totality are vegan in itself. But I don't know. That's just what I was doing. Um, I don't know. Stayed up. I watched anime all. I watched anime all night on Netflix. I spent at least I binge watched seven hours worth of shows on of anime on Netflix, which is pretty cool as well. I don't know if y'all are big anime nerds like me, but. Love anime, going all the way back to Yu Yu Hakusho, going all the way back to Dragon Ball Z with the Kamehameha waves every single day. I don't, <laughs> that's the coolest thing. Like I remember when I went to college and I was going to ASU, and I had friends from Brazil, I had friends from um, Colombia, I had friends from all over the place. And I remember we would be talking, and we would be talking about you know like the shows we watched growing up, the stuff that we would sit we would sit down in front of the TV and just watch for four or five hours straight. And I was telling them about how when I was growing up. Niggas couldn't tell me. N- nobody could tell me. Nobody in their mind could tell me that I couldn't. That I couldn't be go. That I couldn't be Goku or Gohan. Nobody could tell me that I couldn't be that. Real Manuel H. What, what, what am I studying? Except at the time, I was studying. Um, I was studying a lot of different stuff because I always bounced around with my major. So like when I first got in, I was architectural engineering until I figured out what architectural engineering really is. And then after that, I got into. Um, I got into kinesiology, then I stopped with that because I was like, I don't know, I just wasn't my passion. Then I went from kinesiology, I went to communications, and by then I was kind of effing up. By then I had already transferred to my university, and I started, you know, partying, hanging out with girls. I just messed up all of that. And so, here I am. I don't know I can like my people. But, which is cool, you know. I do miss college. I just came back. I just came back from school last year. You know that was the year that I fucked up. But even to this day, I still miss it. You know, shout out to everybody. By the way, shout out to everybody listening to me right now from ASU. I do appreciate the love from ASU. Some of the people who I do listen to on the podcast, on the Facebook Live, are from ASU. Forks up. Is it forks? Up? Yeah, forks up. Forks up. Sun devils all day. Sun devils every single day. Um. It was a good time. It was a good moment in time, man. It is no, it is no better experience in the United States of America. There is no better experience than attending a, a main public university. Like it's like the best experience that you can have in your life. The girls, the parties, the food, the campus. You have to go to a really shitty university to go to a university in the United States and not enjoy it. Like it's just impossible. I'm a man. I think. My first year at that school, no matter of fact, I, I think it was my first semester, my first two months. I always tell people this, like my first month at that school, I went to more parties than I had ever been to in my whole life. Like that first year, I went to more parties than I had ever attended in my whole life at that time. Like it was just insane. I mean, then they had the Naked Palooza, the Naked Palooza Parade, where you just see a, like thousands of kids just all go to this concert naked and be dancing. And she was like an EDM party. Everybody was off of Molly and pills. Not saying I don't do, I don't do Molly, by the way. I don't do Molly. That, that never been my thing. But, and that was one thing that blew me about going to college too. Maybe just because ASU was in Arizona. I didn't know that doing drugs was that big in the United States of America. That was one thing that threw me off. Like, 
when you go there, I remember, like, my roommate, shout out to my roommate, my roommate back in the day, um, what was that boy's name? I shouldn't say his name, because he might have a good job right now, but talented dude, talented dude, hella smart dude, one of the smartest dudes that you can have, this dude used to snort cocaine in our dorm living room, like, on a regular day basis, it was just normal for me to walk in the living room and see him just doing... <laughs> <laughs> the funny, the, the the funniest time he did it. The funniest time I remember him doing it was when um he did it one time and started singing like he did it one time and out of nowhere just started singing like old old school black songs like. <sighs> <laughs> no, he, he didn't sing James Brown. What was that one he sung? It was um, what was that song he was singing? Oh, Wish Upon a Star by Rose Royce. <laughs> like this nigga was singing Wish Upon a Star by Rose Royce. <laughs> oh, we never wish it together. I was like, how do you even know that? Like, how do you even know that song? Like, nobody's supposed. They ain't no white dude know that song. How do you even know that song? <laughs> that was a good song. Every time I wish upon a star and wish that we were together And just to be here I'm going to download that song I'll be talking about Let me look at that up Rose Royce, Wish Upon a Star Rose Royce, Wish Upon a Star But more of the story is, yeah, the college experience is great Did you go to college, my man? Manuel H, did you, um, did you go to college? Are you going to school right now? Rose Royce, Wish Upon a Star Best song Best song in the universe. Every time I wish upon a star, we were together. I was reading earlier this tweet that um that our president uh, that our president serving residing said that he put he put some um he put this tweet out saying that the journalist he said these journalist sites um what were they called. Cool, bro, bro. He said, um, these journalist sites, what were they, um, what were they called? ABC, CNN, Fox. He said, those sites are, he had a, I don't remember what it was exactly he said. He said, those sites are, aren't enemies of me, they're enemies of the people. ABC, CNN, MSNBC, not MSNBC, but I'm pretty sure it was CNN and ABC are enemies of me. Now, what I didn't like about that, and everybody's talking about it, in fact, if you go on Twitter right now, if you go on your Twitter timeline right now and go to the tweeting moments, you'll see, like, all these journalists across the world, you know, talking about it and protesting against it because history has shown that most dictators, most dictators, most evil leaders have a history of silencing journalists, sil- silencing the press, whether it be Adolf Hitler who actually silenced the journalists and actually and it's, he silenced the press and actually filled and streamed the newspapers in Germany with a bunch of propaganda. Or you have dudes like, um, well, Adolf Hitler's the only guy who comes to my mind at the time. And it's just kind of, that shows you how bad it is when we can really take shit that Adolf Hitler did, tactics that Adolf Hitler enforced on his country and comparing to stuff that Donald Trump is doing. Now, when he says, and he discredits ABC and CNN, see, on one side, I'm kind of, on one side, I'm kind of like that stupid because first off, ABC and CNN aren't like, like how does he calls them alternative news pushing out fake facts. They are pretty accredited news sources. Like even to this day, I'll still if I really want to get the straight story, if I really want to get the straight take on the story, I'll go to CNN, I'll go to MSNBC, I'll go to ABC. Yeah, I'll even go to Fox. Fox is Republican. It is a Republican news source. It is a Republican news source, and I do have interest in Republican news. Shout out to my main DOC. What's going on with you? But at the same time. I still listen to Fox News. I still listen to CNN News because I know for a fact they they real on what they real on what they say. They ain't just they ain't just making it up. You know they, they ain't just making it up. But what about you, family? Shout out to my main D Rob for joining in. So it is it is a little bit it is a little bit different. I don't know what I don't know what Trump is on. I don't know. Like I said, like I said, at the end of the day, my thing is I think he's just he's just silencing he's just silencing anybody who he know disagree with him, who he know doesn't share the same sentiments as him. Is that the thirty four GPA ninety two? Is that what you meant? Uh, GPA, what a GPA ninety two. I haven't heard that. I probably would have gotten to a better university, but. You know, he's just silencing, he's just silencing everybody who he feel disagree with him, man. You know, that's his choice to do. You know, I we shouldn't allow that. There's somebody who told me yesterday, I think it was the Uber driver he was riding with, and I think he was him who told me he thinks no, it was Wednesday night. He told me he thinks Trump is gonna get impeached, which that might happen, you know. Um 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if we can impeach anybody in the United States. I don't even know the laws and regulations behind actually impeaching somebody. That would be funny because. I don't know anybody who's been impeached, but that would be funny to be alive in the first time that the United States president has been impeached. I think the only I think the closest we ever had to somebody being impeached was when we had Jimmy Carter in like 30, 40 years ago. And he actually quit because this thing was getting Alzheimer's and stuff. He was falling asleep at the desk while giving press conferences and stuff like so that situation. That situation was a little bit different. I can understand why you would say why you would say, you know, I'm supposed to step down. But I don't know. And I don't know, we, you know, we, it's in, we're in a hot place right now. We're in a hot place. Right, we're in a hot place right now. I don't know. Um, the funny thing I'm wondering is, I keep wondering, if we got, what I always keep wondering is, if we got Donald Trump right now, who's the, per, who's the person we're going to have in the future? Like, who are we going to get? Because usually the president, the president that comes before the lie, the president that comes before the next one sets the groundwork for who's going to be president next. So, like D.L. Hughley said, like how D.L. Hughley said one time, he was talking about how Barack Obama won the election in 2009, 2008, and shout out to 300 score what was going on with you, baby, welcome to the Periscope. He was talking about how Barack Obama won the election in um, 2008, and he said, you know, he said, you know, that's how bad of a job, what's up with you, my man? He said, you know how bad, of, he said, you know, that's how bad of a job um, George Bush did to where every, the whole country said, we're gonna try the black guy next. We're gonna we're gonna try the black guy next. After this, I, I'm gonna take a risk. We're gonna try the black guy next. And to some extent, that's real. That's real. So I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know who. We, I don't know who you gonna pick. I don't know who we gonna pick after after Donald Trump. I pray to God that somebody who's somewhat sane, or even if the country is even. I don't even know. If, I don't even know if we even gonna be in a in a position suitable enough to even try to elect another president because, you know. I think having Donald Trump in office right, I think having Donald Trump in office right now, I think it kind of tore down the political system that we already had in place as far as like how we, how we view things, how we went about things. I'm going to just put these cameras closer because hell, ain't but two. I'm going to put these right here. Let's see. What that, what? So, that, ah, no, I should make it too far. This one right here. This one right here. Okay. Okay. So, with that being said, okay, so with that being said, so, yeah, it already, it already tore down the political system, so I don't know, things has changed, things is changing, people are changing, we're getting new people, even now how Donald Trump's cabinet, like his whole cabinet keeps falling apart, I mean, D-Rock said, I mean, when you elect someone who has no political background, bro, I know, this nigga, this nigga, this dude, he didn't even join the debate team in high school, this dude literally has no political background, but you know what, and I was talking to somebody about this, there never really has been I think being president is such a rare job like there's so there are not that many people who in the world who submitted who submitted job applications to be a president so I can understand why 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 the standards are so low like I understand why the standards are so low I mean you, I would expect the standards to be a little bit higher I would expect them I would expect people to be more cautious about who they're electing but it is what it is man you know people People want the, what they want. People like what they elected. I I disagree with it totally. I disagree with the nigga getting elected totally because I was like, the dude's a hothead. His temperament is bad. You don't really know which way he's going to swing. d says, like you said, it seems like it sets up for anyone to become president, literally. You know, yeah, it sets up for any pun, anyone to become president. And, you know, truthfully, if you want to be all the way honest, like I always say, every empire has its fall. Every single empire has its fall. This might be the time when the United States has its fall. This might be the time when the United States actually takes that fall and people stop. It falls from glory. You know, it started with us electing Donald Trump. And I'll be alive to see it. Which I hope not, because I hope, I, hope, I hope we don't fall. Because I do, I do love this country. I do love from being here. I do love it. I think this is like, literally I'll say all the time. I think this is the best country ever. I want my... Well, I'm on it, Mark Rubio. He really he realized all Americans are legal. You know what, Mark Rubio? I don't. I never really paid that much attention to Mark Rubio. Like I can't even pay, I can't even pull up his face in my head. I can never remember his policies. It was I don't know. I can't remember if it was him. I don't know if it was Mark Rubio, but there was one Republican. It was um, it was either Mark or Ted Cruz or somebody. And this dude was like, I googled this. 
when they were having the election, there was a thing you used to be able to do where you could just Google somebody's name or Google and all their opinions and all their all the legislation that they were trying to get passed would come up. So I did it one time with this dude. I don't know if I'm trying to remember if it was Mark Rubio or Ted Cruz. All I know is when I Googled it, some of the scariest fucking ideas pulled up behind it. Like it was I'm trying to remember what it was. It was something like we're gonna push all it was like push all Mexicans out the country or severing ties. Like if you think Donald Trump was radical, this nigga was radical as hell. I'm talking about it was way worse than Donald Trump. It was it was way worse than Donald Trump. Might have y'all saying Ted Cruz? Okay, it might have been Ted Cruz. It was scary as shit. I was like, this is serious. Like I was surprised he made it to the finals. I was like, y'all ain't scared. Like that's the one thing I never get about some Republicans and the Republican side of things. And once again, I always say I'm not Democratic nor am I Republican. I'm just a person who gives his opinions. And if I see somebody on the left who says something I agree with, I'll comment on that. If I see somebody on the right who says something who agrees with, I'll comment on that. I'll give him my support. But most Republican leaders, most Republican politicians say some of the craziest shit when they get on top of a stage in a podium. When they get on top of a podium and start speaking to that microphone, they say some of the most radical fuck shit on... Oh, I'm a, I gotta stop cursing. They say some of the most radical stuff and all the time I keep thinking, y'all really about this? Because like most of... Most, 98% of the stuff that Ted Cruz says, and I say about 56% of the stuff that... That may just have been worse than the situation we're in. That may have just been worse than the situation that we're in. I do reckon, yeah, it have been worse, but 98% of the stuff that I read that dude said it might have been Ted Cruz, 56% of the stuff that I read, Don, heard Donald Trump says, is enough to start a war. A lot of the stuff they say is enough to start a war. It's enough to start saying, to make a motherfucker say, you know what, we're going to have a fight. We're actually going to start something. And I always keep wondering, y'all really, like, y'all really want this to happen? Like, y'all really want us to go into war? Like, is they talking that they talking that type of shit that can start a war. Like how Donald Trump had responded to something the president said. He he tweeted something. He was like, he was like, um, what did that boy say? He said, um, he said something to we're gonna send some bad guys. It's something about we're gonna send some bad guys to Mexico to get him or something like that. I'm like, bro, you you don't say that to a you don't say that to a president. You don't say that to a whole country. Now, granted, I will say Mexico was in no position to defend himself against us, but still, you don't say that to a president. You don't do that. Like because I want you, man. Like you you can't like free free underscore Willie said. But Hillary Clinton wanted to put a no-fly zone on Syria, and Russia wasn't having that. That raises a question, I think. Why did she want to put a no-fly zone on um, on Syria? What, what was that about? Both of them want war. Yeah, both of them want war. Both of them want. Both both of them want to start a fight. Both of them wanted to. I. I I don't know why they would want war. I guess there's profit in war. I guess there's a lot to be gained in having war. You know, maybe that's why. Um. Me personally, I don't see it. I don't see the benefit of it. Um, but once again, I'm a peacekeeper. Actually, thinking about it. Mm. But you know what? One thing is true, and I was thinking about this earlier. Is um, Ben Carson was the best. Oh, shot by the way. Free underscore Willie said Ben Carson was the best. He was so nice. You know what? Ben Carson was nice. Ben Carson seemed like a nice person, but. In all, in all actuality, bro, he I just thought he was stupid. Like I, he seemed like a nice guy. He just seemed like he just seemed like a kid. He said it seemed like that kid growing up, and when you would go to lunchtime, he would just sit in the corner eating he would just sit in the corner eating oatmeal by himself with the bowl that he bought. Hey, I'm back, so I was back to your question. I haven't gotten, but I plan to. He's a brain surgeon. He's a brain surgeon. You know, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about people like that. There are some people in the world who are so talented, so gifted, so intelligent, so high above everybody else in one particular. Ben Carson's area might be brain surgeon. Out of touch on what's going on with you. They awkward as fuck. His his thing was brain surgeon was brain surgery. He might have been a skill. He might have been a whiz in brain surgery. As soon as you gave him a scalpel and put a wrap around his face, that nigga might have been a whiz in brain surgery. But he would just say some of the stupidest stuff. Hey, out of touch, one. What's up with you, man? What's up with you? How you been doing? He would just say some of the craziest stuff, and I'll be like, like he said it was it was him who said that shit about um I want to put less. 
They were doing this thing. I don't know if y'all know this, but Harriet Tubman actually ended up being on the twenty dollar bill. Harriet Tubman is going to be on the twenty dollar bill. They had this nigga. This nigga going to talk about why don't we put her? What do you say? Like the dollar, like the two dollar bill or three dollar bill or something like. I was like, nigga, don't put Harriet Tubman on the three dollar bill. Like who says like? That was just so stupid. That was so stupid, bro. That was like the most retarded thing on himself. He packed this bear on himself. And once again, he might be a good hearted guy. Don't get me wrong. He might come, he might speak from a good hearted place. Like the core of his being might be a great person, but he just says some of the stupidest stuff. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And, um, let me. <sighs> My morality. My morality and my heart doesn't want me to say this, but I'm just going to say this. All, hey, shout out to Lex and my little sister joining on my Facebook Live. I love you, baby. All the people, let me just say this in a nice way. Um, I don't know how I'm going to say this in a nice way. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. As a man, as a man. I judge the I judge the success of a man. I judge how successful a man is by four things: his morality, how much money he has, what is he doing with that money to help the community, and the woman he has behind him. Now, Michelle Obama, you can when you have Barack Obama, you know Barack Obama had Michelle Obama behind him, and that was a true stallion. That was a true Mustang. That was a woo, like that was just a real horse, ass ass like a horse and all, just a true woman. When you had Donald Trump, even though I, even though I, I feel a certain type of way about having a woman be the first lady of the United States who used to pose nude, at the end of the day, she was a hustler and she was about her stuff. I respect her. Say what you want to about the woman; she is about her business. She is out there making her own money. I respect that. Now, Ben Carson's wife. Ben Carson's wife, Ben Carson's wife, Ben Carson's wife, y'all know what I'm about to say, if y'all have seen what this woman looks like, y'all know what I'm about to say, matter of fact, I don't even know, I don't even have to say, y'all know what I'm about to say, if we just, if we, if we just take all aesthetic appeal out of the equation, let's take all aesthetics out of the equation, let's just focus on the way this woman is, I don't think I don't think this bitch is made to be a first lady. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be real with you. I don't think she was made to be a first lady. I just don't. I I just don't think it. Out of touch. One said he gave her a brain transplant for her birthday. I would have gave her a lot of different transplants. Free Willy. Mike Pence's wife looks like a mule. Hey, bro. I I said. Hey, I said this. I said y'all said that. I didn't say anything. All I'm saying is. Even if you take aesthetic appeal out of the situation, just by the way she looks, just by the way she acts, just by the way she dresses, I don't think she's made to be a first lady. I'm sorry. One thing about Michelle Obama, you can say what you want to about the way she physically look ass and all, but she carried herself like a stallion. She carried herself like a stallion. She was in the community. She was in Black Girls as Rock. And she just was a strong woman. Out of touch one is is why she was rarely in the public. Exactly. Like and so you know, like I like I always say that like that was the one thing I did like about having Barack Obama and Michelle Obama as leaders of the country is because you would see Michelle Obama in action. You would see you would always see Michelle Obama in action. You ain't just you ain't, she ain't just gonna which is I think that's kind of a trait of just black women in general, because they ain't just gonna be your wife. You got a black woman for a wife and you on top, she ain't just gonna be your wife. Matter of fact, I'll tell you something straight up. There's a reason why when you go on when you see all these rappers, all these rappers, Fetty Wap, uh Jay Z, uh Jay Z, all these niggas, it's a reason it's a reason why they all have their own shows. But Michelle made school lunches horrible, bro. School lunches was already horrible. She, that didn't take that much effort. Did you hear Mr. Miss Carson singing? I didn't hear her singing. I didn't. I have never heard her. I have never heard her singing before. I've never heard her singing. And school lunches has always been bad. You know what? I'll take that back. I'll take that back. School lunches. School lunch. When I went to Alabama, this is the only thing I will say that was somewhat nice about Alabama. When I went to Montgomery, Alabama, and I went to Houston Hill Middle School, and I went to McGill um, Middle School, they had the best school lunches I've ever had anywhere else. Now, they used to be bigger. She's like a bad... Out of touch with that, she's like a bad American Idol contestant. (laughs) Why was she singing, though? Is that that her her profession? Like, is she singing? Is that her actual profession to sing? Or, like, why, why was she singing? 
But I mean, you know, it is what it is. So I, I uh, you know, hey, hey, you know, hey, bless, bless the young lady. She sang it. She sang at one of Ben's rallies. Also, my school had cooks, but not anymore. She sang at one of Ben's rallies. You know, you know, it's a good thing that she sang. You know, God, God bless her heart. God bless the woman's heart. She probably can. She's probably a very, very nice woman, but I just don't think she's strong. I don't even think she's strong enough to be leaders. And like I said, you take all aesthetic appeal out the way. I'll give you a prime example because I, I don't want to. I don't want you guys to think I'm somebody who's just totally about looks. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, obviously. If you just off a physical impression, when you look at Bernie Sanders, if Bernie Sanders walked up to you right now, you would think that he would be one of the school cafeterias that Free Underscore Willie is talking about. He don't look like he should be president. But the reason why, the reason why I supported him, <laughs> Free Underscore Willie said Bernie Sanders look homeless. <laughs> the reason why, but the reason why I supported Bernie Sanders, the reason why I got on the same podcast, the same periscope and talked about him, the reason why. I actually went in the Democratic nomination. I went in and put my vote in for him was because I trusted his values. I think he was a great person. I could see that he was a strong person spiritually. Physically, maybe not. But mentally, morally, I think he was a strong person. I think he would have got a lot of stuff done. (laughs) Brother Touch once said, Bernie looks like he shops with coupons. (laughs) He probably still do. Fernando Scorley said, I don't like him because he was a sellout. Really? Oh, I know what you're about to say. You, you think he was a sellout because he supported Hillary, huh? I will say that was the only thing I didn't approve of him was is him supporting Hillary. I don't. I didn't approve of that either. You know what? And see, that's the thing I don't like about politics. That's the thing I don't like about the entertainment industry is you have a lot of people. You have a lot of people who will co-sign somebody just to keep themselves relevant or do something. Me personally. Even though he has more in common with Trump, oh yeah, he does. And who yeah, da da da, who yeah, da da da. What's up with you, baby? Even though he has more in common with Trump, you know what I said is about that. He has more in common with Trump, except he's on the opposite opposite spectrum, on the opposite spectrum of getting stuff done. He has more in common with that. He has more in common with him. He's on the opposite spectrum. What's up with you, family? Shout out to who yeah, da da da. What's up with you, man? Shout out to you for joining in right now. I think the the main issue, main thing. Is either he support Trump or Hillary? That's what my sister just said that on the Facebook live. I think the reason why he did, and my sister just said this, um, the main reason he did support he did support Hillary Trump was because he he saw it as like the lesser of two evils. And I still, even though I voted for Hillary because I wanted her not Trump, I still got I'm still kind of pissed off that her and the other Democrats really plotted to keep Bernie Sanders from getting in the White House because now look what we got. Now look what we got, and. That's why I always say, and that's why I always say, uh, who your daughter said he voted for the Green Party. Okay, I respect that. See, I, I wasn't that familiar with them. Popular vote doesn't matter. Yeah, you know what? I still, I think the popular vote matters. It's just, I don't know, man, because I, like, I was talking to my Uber driver about this two days ago. Like, I think that, but I didn't really like any candidate. Bro, I didn't like any of them either. Out of Touch once said, Bernie wanted us to avoid this nightmare. He fought the good fight against Quint Clinton, the only electoral college. He fought the good. We got, I knew Trump was going to win. No, I knew Trump was going to win. Let me, let me take it. No, 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 no. First off, let me just say this right now. I voted for Bernie Sanders. I was praying Bernie Sanders would win. I knew, I knew for, I knew in the bottom of my heart, I knew in the bottom of my heart that Bernie Sanders wasn't going to win. But I still voted for him. I knew Trump was going to win. I knew Trump was going to win. Clinton doomed us all when she stole the Democratic ticket. Yeah, yeah, that was what messed us up. She stole it. When Hillary Clinton stole stole the Democratic vote, that's what effed us up. And one thing else I got to say about that, too. The problem with Hillary Clinton was it was so many different things. It was just so many different things. The first thing was is she had too much scandal around her. Nobody's talking about the DNC links. Oh, yeah. Bernie didn't sell out. He conceded the Democratic wig, big wig, so decided by choosing Hillary. Oh, yeah. Trump paid his way into the White House, period. I don't think he paid his way to the White House. I think he just fought square and square. I'm talking to my little sister right now. But I think that one the big, the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems with that whole thing was first, first with Hillary. Hillary is just not a charismatic person. You know, it is what it is. Hillary is not a charismatic person. She just doesn't know how to talk to people. She she knows how to talk to people. You know what? I learned this. You know what? Let me take this back. 
When she's by herself in individual conversations with her and one other person, she bees herself. When she's on the stage, when she's on the podium, when she's talking to people, she doesn't know how to be a people person. You know, the problem is when people don't understand it, when you get behind this microphone, when you get behind this microphone, you're talking to people, when you get in front of people, at the end of the day, you got to know how to interact with people. Like I'm talking to y'all right now, you got to know how to talk to people and let people know that you're real. The problem with Hillary is she's so used to just being Hillary Clinton at a time, if we didn't have Bernie Sanders, if we didn't have Donald Trump in, she would have won because she was a proper candidate. Had of touch once that Hillary was the only candidate Donald could have been. She had much candidate baggage, no charisma. If this was a formal, if this was a formal election, had it been a formal election and it was no Donald Trump and it was no Bernie Sanders, she would have won. She would have won then because it would just been it would just would have been one born politician going against another politician. And truthfully, that's how it's always been until until we had Barack Obama coming. Then we started having the charismatic movement. When Barack Obama, no matter if I take that back, when Bill Clinton came in, when Bill Clinton came in, the, out of we've we've had forty five presidents. Out of forty five of them, I think only five of them really had charisma. It was Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Ronald Reagan, definitely J F Kennedy, definitely. You know, take that back. I'll say six. Um. Roosevelt, President Roosevelt in the, in the 1940s. And, uh, yeah, Lincoln. I don't know, but I see, I don't, I, I've never, I don't really don't know how charismatic Lincoln is because I've never heard him talk before. Like, I'm going, I'm seeing, even now I'm telling you Roosevelt because I've listened to some of the fireside chats that Roosevelt had. I can't speak on Lincoln because I really don't know how charismatic he was. But them and Donald Trump. Even though I don't approve of Donald Trump, I do think Donald Trump is really charismatic. He's just in his own way. In his own way of being charismatic, he is his own way. He is his own. He's entertaining as fuck. Free underscore really said Lincoln changed thousands of minds. Yeah, that's true. That is true. He changed a lot. Of, he changed. He, he, he did. I mean, see, I've always. Yeah, no, no, he's he's charismatic in his own way. See, the he knew majority of America's racist. Oh yeah, well he knew a majority of he knew the majority of America is ignorant. That's the difference. He knew the majority of America is is ignorant. He knows that the majority of the motherfuckers living in those backfields, living in them trailer homes, living in Idaho, Indiana, in them cornfields, sucking on each other's souls, fucking their sisters and cousins. He knew that all of them. He knew that all that most of them are ignorant. They don't care about. They're not gonna pay attention to the facts and something like that. Who would I said ignorance and racism go hand in hand? Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. If we're just really, most people voted on the lesser of two evils. Oh yeah, yeah. Most people voted the lesser of two evils. And what made me so mad about that? What made me so freaking irritated, angry, and irate about that was this: why this why I don't get about America. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna just say this: why I don't get. For instance, y'all, if Y'all really voted the two least liked people into the finals of being president of the United States. Y'all really voted the two least liked people in the, at the end. Like y'all really did like voted the two least liked people out of the whole out of the whole campaign into being the, into being the finalist. I'll never get that. I will never understand. I'll never understand that, man. I'll never y'all voted the two least liked people, the two least liked people. Free underscore said it's because there were 16 Republicans running. I didn't even know it was 16 Republicans. The only Republicans I knew that were running last year was Ben Carson, Ted, Ben, Ted. I want to say Sarah Palin. No, it's not Sarah Palin. And Sarah Palin just needs to shut up forever. Sarah Palin, I almost said something very rude. I'm not going to say it. They need to, they need to lock Sarah Palin in a freezer and jack in, in the jack in the box or somewhere. Like, I, I just, I'm tired of hearing her talk. Like, she just says stupid. She just says stupid stuff like, she just says stupid stuff. This is just, just, just slow. If I stand on my house in Alaska, I can see the moon. Like, this is, I don't know. I just, I don't want to. She just is very, very slow. But you know, you're my man. So I, I don't know, man. I just, it's, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It is what it is. Like, hell. I think. I think the main issue, I think the main, I think the main issue with, I think the main issue with Sarah Palin is she's just not well informed on a lot of stuff. Like she just, 
She's just not well informed a lot of stuff, and she just is very slow. Like she just says a lot of stuff. I don't even know how she made it to be mayor. Maybe it's maybe it's contacts. Maybe everybody just says she got in. Maybe they all. Everybody just says Sarah Palin got in because she looked good. Everybody just says she got in because she was attractive. And she's attractive. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like Sarah Palin actually is a milf. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sarah Palin is Sarah Palin is definitely milf quality. I'm not gonna lie to you about that. She definitely is a pretty woman. But at the same time, it's like I would like I really wouldn't like. I really wouldn't bring that. I can see Russia. I can see Russia from my house. Yeah, shout out to Ed Baldy for joining. Yeah, I can see Russia from my house. Sarah Palin. Who says that? Who says that? I can see Russia from my house. I can say that because I'm a podcast. It's different. You don't run for president and say something like that and people just forget about it. No. Shout out to Nasty A one two three U. What's up with you, baby boy? Like I like who who says who says it? Like I don't know. So more of the story. More more of the story is is this this woman. She she definitely shouldn't. Have sh- uh, D Rock said, "Well, we know why people voted for Trump at first. Oh yeah, we know why. It looks two thousand. Most people came out and supported Trump because he had deal with their values, and they felt like they felt a lot of people felt like they weren't they were being ignored. And so, she's the reason McCain lost in two thousand eight. I can see why. Who that said? Remember when she wanted to build a bridge to nowhere? Oh no, 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 no. She wanted to build a bridge to nowhere. She wanted to do what? Build a bridge to nowhere? I don't remember. I don't remember that." She wanted to build a bridge. She wanted to build a bridge to nowhere. Uh, I don't know. I don't even remember that. I, I, I don't know. More of the story. More the story is my sister said, hey, shout out to Shanna Sayings. Shanna Shani Sayings. What's Shani Sayings? You know, the first time she came on here, I got her name right, and now I'm getting it wrong. Hey, shout out to the Indy Nate. What's up with you, man? Why are you doing today, baby? We talking about, well, we're talking about the election. We're talking about why we have Donald Trump standing in the White House. Shout out to At The Scopus. What's going on with you, baby? Welcome to the Periscope. How are you doing today? My sister said America showed their true colors on Facebook Live. Yeah, they sure did. Yeah, man, it's it's, it's bad, man. You know, it's, 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 I don't know, man. It's funny. That's okay. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, my man or my lady. I forgot if you're a man or a lady or not, but I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? Oh, yeah, you're from Israel. I forgot. Election wasn't shocking. Shout out to the prime time boys OG. The scope says sing chocolate rain. I was singing candy rain, but I wasn't singing. Well, I wasn't singing that. Shout out to Jay, Jay Naladova. What's going on with you, baby? Welcome to the Paris. How are you doing? So, you know, Sarah Palin's slow. I really am. I really am curious to know. Free underscore Willie said, I'm a far right Republican, but you know I'm not racist. Oh, yeah. Let me just say this. I don't think all Republicans are racist. I think just everybody has their own opinion. And like I've said before, I'm not Democratic. I'm not Democratic or I'm not Republican. I just see if there's somebody on the left who, if there's somebody on the left who has something I agree with, I'll comment off. There's somebody who has something I want to say, I'll comment on it. The scoper said, seeing Mr. Grinch. I don't know why everybody would just get on here and think I'm just going to be singing. Like, I don't even, how did Mr. Grinch go? You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch. Mr. Grinch. Mr. Grinch. Donald Trump is Mr. Grinch right now. Donald Trump is the new Mr. Grinch. This nigga's taking away travel. He took away travel, abortion, air. So he's literally taking away everything like Mr. Grinch. If you underscore Willie said Republicans generally are racist because most are Southern. Who would have said who's from Israel here? Who's from Israel listening right now? Who's from Jerusalem? Who's from Israel? South of Jerusalem in the house, West Side Israel. Well done. This <laughs> Gopi said, Well done. But you know that was garbage, but I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I appreciate your uh compliment. At e- AJM at one two five, what's going on? Trump is trying to give Israel thirty billion dollars in aid. You know what? And I want to ask y'all about that. That relationship that the United States has with Israel, why is that? Like, why is that? Only Palestine. Why is that? Oh, not Israel. Only Palestine. Screw Israel. Hey, don't, don't, don't do no country banging. Don't do no country banging. I am from Israel. Who ya, who da ya da? No, no country banging. Wale 2017. What's going on with you, baby? No country banging. No, no country banging. We're not banging Israel. We're not banging Palestine tonight. If y'all want to have y'all Israel Crips and Palestine buzz fight, do that somewhere else. Say the cheetah is faster than Dandelion. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I am a black Trump supporter. Nah, that is a block for me. Can't say that. Yeah, screw Israel and pro- yeah, yeah. Shani saying no, no, no. Screw Ethiopia too. And free when say who you know. Israel allows freedom of religion. Palestine doesn't. Palestine doesn't allow freedom of religion. Really? I didn't know that. Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting fact. 
You know, I've talked to a lot of people. Hey, language, 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 language. I've talked to a lot of people from Israel, a lot of people from Palestine, and we've had a conversation about, you know, who was more right, who was more right in the situation. Shout out to Putin underscore Vladimir. Who's more right, the people from the left, the people from the right? At King Kong 38, what's up with you, baby? How you doing? Sing Russian anthem. I don't know the Russian anthem. I don't have a Russian anthem lyrics in my pocket. From my understanding of the Israel and Palestine conflict, shout out to Nick8456. From my understanding of the conflict in Palestine versus Israel, I do think, I do think that Palestine is in the right. I do think that Palestine is in the right. Your voice is king. I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. I do believe, I do believe Palestine is in the right. Because from my understanding, it looks like, it looks like Israel is coming to Palestine and just taking their land away from them because it was promised to them by God. Because in a Bible, a book that's 2,000 years old, it means that that land is theirs. Now, to me, I think that's pretty effed up because like I've said before in this Periscope, I live in the United States. I live here and I'm fine. But if a Native American comes to my apartment right now, knocks on the door and says, hey, you need to get the fuck out of here. This is my land. I'm going to go grab a gun from my cousin. I'm going to shoot him. That just it is what it is. You're not taking my apartment just because it used to be a land. The statute of limitations is up. Now, plus they're killing Palestinians to genocide. I know. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. And who you that? I'm aware of that. I know what they're doing out there. I know. You know, all of all of it, all of it shouldn't be happening at all. That's false and incorrect. And he's saying Israel is stealing land from Palestine fam. That's what who you that says. King underscore com said Israel is a baby killer. Three underscore we said it's just all messed up. It's all messed up because you're fighting for rights to a land that's not yours anymore. If it was yours two thousand two thousand years ago, then it's different. But that's that doesn't even matter anymore. At this point in time in this century, it's not yours anymore. Shout out to Sam ten seventy four. What's going on? EGM125 said, do you know any conspiracies? Yeah, okay. He knows all those conspiracies. Who you thought I said Israel was just developed after World War II? That is true. Which is true. And I can understand why the countries would get together and try to create a space of land for Jewish people to live on. Because at the end of the day, they had, they had a pretty, they had a pretty rough run through, through, um, through the, the Holocaust. I can understand why. Alexa Green, shout out to Alexa Green. What's going on with you, baby? Israel was created and given to Jewish people after the Holocaust. Yeah, but I can understand why they were created. I just don't feel like they should have stolen land from Palestine. EJM125 asked me, which conspiracy do you think is real? I think aliens are real. Who did that? By now, they're doing a Holocaust of Palestine genocide. Israel are planned the tanks. Get you some in jail. What is that? Free underscore really said, but looking at it, Israel is better because they believe in women's rights. Palestine doesn't. Yeah, they got to work on it. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't know if Palestine doesn't believe in women's rights, but um, we do got to work on that. Ethiopian government is corrupt. You know what? I, I don't know if Ethiopian government is corrupt, but I will say, judging by the nigga that we got right now sitting in our sitting leading our country right now, I can't really talk that much shit about Ethiopia right now. We are... We are really in a good position to be talking mess about other countries right now. There used to be there used to be a time there used to be a time where if you were an American, you really could talk shit about somebody else's president. And like, man, them got them Haitians is crazy. Them them Saudis is crazy. Like now, all that just went out the window. We can't talk no shit at all. I'm talking about it all. True, take them. World is paradise. No war, bro. Man, and Nate man, and the British man that used it. I don't know what they're talking about right there. Who your daughter said Ethiopia is an occupier. Free underscore really said most Middle Eastern countries are oppressive to women. It's not right. Okay, now to what Free underscore really said. What to what Free underscore really said. I don't know if that's. <sighs> that is true to an extent. I ain't gonna lie. That is true to an extent. That is true to an extent. Shout out to Sandbird. Sandbird for joining. What's up with you, baby? That is true to an extent. I ain't gonna lie. It's because of religion. That is true. How do you start a rave in Ethiopia? You nail a piece of toast to the ceiling. <laughs> and it's said, uh, Indy Nate said, and I burst out laughing. <laughs> Why'd you burst out laughing? I didn't read that part. You know, so. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's true. When you go to Middle Eastern countries, when you go to Middle Eastern countries, there is a lot of, there is a lot of, um, over Trump being president. Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah, no. We, we need to be ashamed of that. We need to be ashamed of that right now. 
I really wonder was it was there this much discourse of why the hell we elected this guy when Adolf Hitler was elected? I really wonder, like when Adolf Hitler got elected to be his position, I really want I really wonder was there that much controversy? Or was everybody just down with it? But to my man Fear underscore underscore really was talking the thing about um about Middle I mean the Middle East how there's a lot of women being oppressed. That is true. But I don't think that is true. And I think that's I think that is something that needs to change. I don't I think because when you go to I think because when you go to most well truthfully it's not even just Islam. When you it's out to no one to score love sixteen. No love. You do need love, baby. I do think when you go to most countries where the traditions, the legislative system heavily revolve around Judaic religions, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Islam, you're going to have a lot of oppression against women. That's in Christianity. That's just in that's just in Christianity. That's just in Islam. I've actually heard. I remember. I remember. I was thinking. I was sixteen. A woman actually explained to me. A woman actually explained to me why in the Bible, because Adam, because Adam ate the apple that Eve gave him, a woman is supposed to be subservient to a man because. Adam, because uh, because he gave an Adam to Apple, ended up kicking kicking us out of that garden of paradise. A woman actually explained that to me in church. Now I think that's totally BS, but at the same time, you know that's what somebody believes. Shout out that Lacey Nicole, my baby Lacey Nicole. How you doing today? And Magic Van, what's going on with you? Shani said you can't legitimize extremism. That's Christianity, not Islam. But I'll say this too. Wisdom twenty two, what's going on with you, baby? But I'll say this. Most old school religions, most old school religions are extreme. If you go to the the original traditions of most religions, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Islam, whether it be all of them, most of them have extremes. It, it just it is what it is. Yeah, who who you that invited? One said, "Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that." You know, most of them, most of them have extremes. Three underscore Willie said, "Adam and Eve is a dumb story, but it does explain why people are so dumb." Damn. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I will. Okay, I want to ask. I want to ask all y'all this right now. Sorry, the sick with a cutty. What's up with you, man? I want to ask all y'all this right now. How many of y'all believe the Adam and Eve story? How many of you guys listen to me right now? How many of you guys are my Facebook Live? How many people on my podcast? How many of you guys actually do believe? Actually, do believe the Adam and Eve story? D Rock says me. Is it Nor? Uh, who's out? Is it Nor? It is Adam and Steve. Edie they said Adam and Steve. Me, Lacey Nicole says me. Lacey Nicole been ignoring me the whole time. I believe it. Who you that said this? Free underscore Willie said. Magic Van said I did. Adam and Steve Uno. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, this is my friend. Now, once again, me personally, hey, Dim Forever, shot the deal with Dim Forever Wanna. Was that what you did? Dismo 9979. Was that what you, baby? Now, me personally, me personally, when he gets a microphone that changes. I believe everything on the Bible. I'm agree with everything. <laughs> Shout out to the dude who said I sound like the dude from Fairly Our Parents. Shout out to the dude who said Radio Voice is it Noah. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Me personally, I don't believe the story. It just is. It's just it's too many. It's just too many holes into the story. I just is just too many holes. Shout out to the five twenty. It just is too many holes into the story. So you mean to tell me these two people got created in the Bible? These two people got created, got set in the garden, surrounded by all these animals. First off, how do you even know it was a garden? How do you even know it was a garden? Because they didn't have gardens, but they didn't have like a. How if you didn't know like how in the fuck you know it's a garden but you don't know you naked like you knew it was a garden before you knew it was naked you were surrounded by every animal in the world every animal in the world is in this garden with you and it just is just too many different things you read the Mishnah the Garden of Eden is Disney World the Garden of Eden dude hey no that would be actually a cool ass ride though like a cool like it'd be like the Discovery Kingdom that'd be a cool ride for Disney World to have you go into this place and it's like just animals and stuff walking around you there's trees with fruit that make you smarter and you and to go in the ride you gotta be naked that could be a great porno dude Indy Nate we're gonna write this as a script bro we're writing this as a script we're gonna write this as a script this is gonna be a playwright we're writing this right now we're writing this that's gonna be a play script we're writing that we're gonna set it to some. We're gonna set it to West Coast Productions. Hey, one of y'all, let us know what. Let us know the name of a good porn company. We're gonna set that script to a porn company. We're gonna call it the Garden of. Let me say that. Girl, we're gonna call that. No, what? I'm leaving. What about you? Yeah, no, it's I'm like. I'm just saying. But anyway, oh, the scopers and who your dad is having a fight. But with that being said, once again, once again, like I've always said before, I'm not that heavy of a religious person, and I, I do, I do. 
People do know that the people do know the Bible is translated. There's a lot of stuff left out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, this is some reason. This is some. This is another reason why I have a hard time believing the Bible on some stuff. At the end of the day, the Bible has been translated from different language to different language for two thousand years, and also I'm gonna say this too. There's one fact. There's one fact about translating the Bible that a lot of people just ignore is slang. It's slang. It's jeria. It's things that we say. There's stuff. I'm 25 years old. There's stuff that my little brother says who's 18 years old that he'll come in the house and tell me and I don't understand what he's talking about. That's a seven year age difference. There's shit that you're saying right now that your mom and dad will say and it's maybe 20 years different, but it's a 20 year age difference between you and your mom and dad. But there's certain slang that your dad will say to you and you'll be like, what? what the, dad, what are you talking about? Like every every black person got that one uncle who be using slang because he used to be he used to be so swag back in the day. He used to be the cool guy back in the day, the ladies man. So he'll still say little slick stuff that means that and that. Like yeah, baby, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a, a clock in that pooty tat. Like it just it is what it is. Slang is a generational thing, exactly. So you gotta understand, slang changes in the language. Just in one language, slang changes every five years, every five to six years. So how much do you think slang change in a language that was two thousand three thousand years old? to be translated into another language and translated over again and again and again it's just like for example like how in the bible they had that story about noah's son what's what's noah's son the, the one who said the father of all black ham they were saying it's out that audrey darling that's a very classic actress name i love that name by the way dude chill at the scopus i don't even what's what's the scopus saying but that's like how they had that one that story about noah ham's son where it says that ham ham's son shem ham and Japheth. I say every four years because it starts in high school. Friend of school, really, that was true. Actually, that actually is true. It's like how they had that story about how how Ham's son, Ham's son, um, what did he say? What did he say? Ham's son supposedly raped Noah. Ham's son supposedly raped Noah in the Bible. But in the Bible, shot the YSL boy, shot the Oreo story. But in the Bible, it says, it don't say he raped his son, raped Noah. It says Ham knew. Ham knew his father. Knew his father. No, it didn't say he says he knew his father. It says Saul was drunk and naked. It says Saul drunk and naked, but then after that in the Bible it says he knew his father. He saw him drunk and naked, and then he knew his father. But they're saying because back then in their language, knew meant to have sex. Knew meant to have sex with a person. So they're saying that he raped his father. Just just little just little shit like that. Just little strange things like that. It's kind of hard to understand. And by the way, thank you guys so much for all the hearts and stuff. I appreciate that. JQ, what's up with you, baby? Just little crazy stuff like that in itself. Slaying changes so much. So it's hard for me to believe that this exact text of the Bible that we have right now is the same, same intent and same message that was meant to be said 2,000 years ago. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. Noah might have been a bad guy. Y'all don't even know. Noah might have been a bad guy in the Bible. Noah might have been a guy who stole all the animals all around the earth and was trying to run away to Mars some goddamn where and God flooded the earth because he was trying to get him to stop and come back. You don't ever even know. You don't ever even know. Jenny saying said, you think too modern about it. His real name was Evan, though. <laughs> Noah's real name was Evan. Evan Stevens. Evan! Keep, keep, bring back my goddamn animals! Evan Almighty. Yeah! Evan Almighty. Oh, the movie with Ben Stiller. I remember that movie. That was actually a good movie. Well, no, that wasn't a good movie. Let me not lie. The first one, Bruce Almighty with Jim Carrey, was a good movie. That was a good one. That was that was a good, that was a good one. That was a good one. Noah's name was Tyrone. Noah's name was Tyrone. <laughs> the scope said Noah's name was Tyrone. You better call on Tyrone. He got all the animals and he ain't coming back. Bruce Almighty was my favorite. Dude, imagine what it would be like to be a god for like a day. Like, imagine what it would be like. Fear underscore Willie said, Noah and the Ark is BS. How are you going to put a rhino on a wood bull before they were even invented? <laughs> rhino 3v3. Bro, it don't make sense. I know. But you know what? Actually. There's a story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. There is a story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. It's like a series of poems that was written in ancient Samaria 3,000 years ago. They say that the stories in the Bible were based off of that. So that might be true too. Happily, yes. I don't know. You know, it is what it is. I don't know. And like I said, there, to the people who listen to me right now, who are Christian, who are Muslim right now, at the end of the day, I have I have nothing against you guys of religion. I have nothing against you what you guys believe in. I respect everything totally. I respect everything. My grandmother, my beloved grandmother, is the evangelist at her church. You know, so at the end of the day, 
Yeah, you did the end of the day, it is what it is, but uh, the eleven eleven that's and then what's up with you? So you know Indy Nate said there was a Jesus type figure in ancient Egyptian mythology. Yo, shout out to Sumatoha, what's up with you, baby? The Scorpio said there are still sun and moon worshippers. I can understand you worshiping the moon and the sun. Like if you put yourself in the mind of a primitive human two, three thousand years ago, I can understand why you would want to worship the moon and the sun. Hey, Queen Mary, was that with you? Queen Mary. Real love. Because, you know, when you look up, when you stare up at the sky, you see the moon and the sun's above you. You know, it is. It, I can understand. I can understand why you would why you would want to worship that. Sadia Rahman. Suma Thoha said, can you read a rap? Can you read a rap, please? Shout out to Pretty Underscore Light Skin. Pretty Under Light Skin, what's going on with you? Queen Mary, thank you for inviting people. To my lady who said, can you read a rap? Um, this is the only rap that comes to my mind right now. This ain't even really a rap. You were an official tie What's up with you? You were just too good to be true. Can't keep your eyes off of you. You'll be like having to touch. <laughs> For your underscore, he said, at the end of the day, most black girls 18 to 15 put penis over God. No, okay, because okay, I was like, really, what? I'll be real with you, bro. Black women, African American, most African American women, most African American women, bro, are the most religious women in the world. Like, that's the most that is the most religious ethnic group of women I've ever seen in my life is African American women. Sugi Falusi, what up with you, man? True, I'm just telling you, man. Like, like a woman, a woman, I you know, you don't you I was talking about you don't know black women like I know black women. A black woman, you can. Muslim, Muslim, Middle Eastern women from Saudi Arabia, from Afghani women, they're heavily religious. They wear garb all day in the soaking heat. I understand that. But a black woman is really religious. A black woman will pray to God. A black woman will kneel down and pray to God before putting Vaseline all over her face and taking off her shirt and wrapping her hair up to beat your ass in the street. They, it is different. It is a totally different thing. I'm telling you. Simatora said, do you like Russian? I like Russian culture. I like Russian culture. But that one guy, 29, what's up with you, man? Queen Mary said, are you against a particular religion? I'm against no, I'm, I'm against no, I get, I'm, we're, I, I'm not against no, I'm not against any particular religion. I'm not against no particular religion. I'm, how's it going? Shout out to that one guy. I'm doing great, my man. How you doing? I'm not, a, I'm not against any particular religion, man. I'm, I'm all for everybody. I'm all for everybody. Free underscore Willie said, that's why I love black girls. They are very wifey material. Religious women are wifey material. That's great. My sisters talk, commented on my Facebook live and said, yes, we are, because we know without God, all things are not possible. That's true. Do you have a religion? So my thought, I said, do you like chicken? <laughs> At the moment, no, I'm not eating chicken right now. At Jos- At Josie Sitova Jason, what's going on with you, baby? No, I mean... I don't lean to any religion right now. I will say that when I'm in a crisis, like when I'm in a crisis, when I'm in a crisis and I'm going through some stuff, just off of instinct because of how I was raised, I will start praying to Jesus. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, I, I'm not a religious person. I do kind of criticize authenticity of the Bible. But when I'm in a crisis, I will pray to God. Like, I will get nervous and start praying to God. Like, who, Jesus, Lord, help me. I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know. My rent is about to be late. I don't know what it is. I just, it's just a habit. It's just a, a Think of rapid. You know, are you religious? Queen Mary said you should review other religions. Oh yeah, I do. I review other religions all the time. Shout out to so cool Food Block for joining the Paris. What's going on with you, baby? Welcome to the podcast. Um no, yeah, yeah, no. I review other religions. I've read I've read a lot of different religions. I've read Greek religions, Roman religions, I read some of the Islam, I've read some in, um some of Buddhist Buddhism beliefs, Buddhist beliefs. I've read a lot of different stuff. Free underscore we said, I pray to God because we don't know what God is real, but we know God is real. The Duke 47, what's up with you, man? Indy Nate said, same habit, just habit from my upbringing, but I probably. God Adib said, God Adib said, what do you think? What do you think of Islam? And that one guy said, you should be a base in your LOL. Queen Mary said, do you think Muslims are terrorists? I don't know. Subject of the Duke 247, we're talking about religion right now. Uh, one of them said, do I think all Muslims are terrorists? Of course not. 
Of course, I don't think all Muslims are terrorists. Of course, it's impossible to have a whole race of people and think all of them are. It's hard to have. A, it's hard to imagine a whole. All like almost stuff. It's hard to have a whole a whole religious following of 1.5 billion people and say that all of them are racist. It's just impossible. That's just. It, I mean, they're just all terrorists. It's just impossible. That is literally just impossible. I apologize. Muslim men are racist of religious belief. It's hard to have a whole religious following of 1.5 billion people and say that all of them are racist. Saludos de Alanadores, como estas mis parceros? Muchas amigos, estoy en nombre de hablando de religión. Do you think the Muslim ban is fair? No, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. God even said, you should research into Islam. You seem like a nice guy. Well, thank you, my bro. I've read into it. But I don't think it's wrong. I think... I think the same thing about Islam as I think about Christianity. At the end of the day, I think all religion is good. I think all religion is good. I think man is inherently evil. I think the idea of most religions is good, but I think man is inherently evil. Okay, it's not a basis. Ah, it's not a basis. No, tú, tú puedes, tú puedes hablar conmigo cuál es el profesor. Ah, tú puedes entender, tú puedes entender uh, inglés. I think that Islam or Christianity, I think that all... I think that all I think I think the base of most religions is good. I think the base of most religions is good. I think that what happens is you have evil groups of people who take the religion and pervert it to their own purposes. So let's say Espanol. Ah, que ruim. É mais eu vou eu vou traduzir para tu, meu amor. Eu vou eu vou eu vou traduzir para ti. Um like say for example, I'll be honest with you. And I'll tell you this about ISIS. If you want to know my personal belief about ISIS, Islamic State, Al Qaeda, all the niggas, I'll be real with you. And I said this before. I think that I think that your pants are okay. I think that ISIS, Al Qaeda. I think that all those all those little sects, subsets of perverted Islam. I think that all of them don't even really the leaders of those groups. I don't even think that they believe in in Islam. I think what it is is they're taking these young poor people in these poor in these countries in the poor areas of Saudi Arabia, in the poor areas of Somalia, in the poor areas of Nigeria. They're manipulating their mind to service their own gains and service their own goals. Because my belief is, if you really were a true believer of Islam, you wouldn't be instructing little kids, teenagers, and the younger adults to go kill themselves and go blow up cars. That's my personal belief. Is cool, Jay Nice, what's up with you, baby? That's my personal belief. Yo estaba, yo estaba hablando que yo, yo creo yo cre que as, las personas as terroristas de Islam con la verdad no son, no son, no son personas que acreditan en, en Islam con verdad. Te voy a entender. Your voice doesn't match you, dude. I know, bro. You know, it is what it is, so. What was the site where people were showcased right we're talking about it? Um, to remind me about that again, Nate. They follow money and they follow God. Muhammad is how you should do it. Here in the West, media media manipulates the ploy to be accepted. Okay. Everybody who just wrote, you guys got to write again because I didn't get nobody's message. This was like four or five messages all at the same time. Um, can you sing? I'm learning how to sing right now. At Val Porter 03. What's up with you, baby? And by the way, all y'all listening right now, make sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all follow. Follow. Share with the people. Follow. Click share. Share with the people. Share. Share. Yeah. Kidnaps or kills kids. It's like if he killed entry to humanity. So, about a month ago, we spoke about a website where people showcase their writing. Oh, Wattpad. Wattpad. Yeah, my Wattpad. I still got my Wattpad, by the way. I still got my Wattpad. Ah, uh, Basis para ti también. Can I remember what it was called? Wattpad. That's it. Yeah, I still got my writing on there. I just uploaded some new stories, bro. Matter of fact, if, if any of you guys have a Wattpad, go follow me on Wattpad, too, by the way. Go follow me on Wattpad too, by the way. Eliana Burley, make sure you guys share share this Periscope. Share the share button. Click the follow button. Let's do keep it popping. So, um, with that being said, with that being said, I think that, um, like I said, so I don't think there's nothing wrong inherently with the original beliefs of Islam. Because at the end of the day, Islam, Christianity, once again, I'm not into either, but I do think that at the end of the day, the core values are coming from a good place. At least in the New Testament of the Bible. In the New Testament of the Bible, Islam, I think the core values are coming from a good place. Do unto others as you wish to be done unto you. Treat people fairly. Live a good life. Eat healthy. Same stuff. Like really, you could get the same. You could get the same understanding reading the Bible as you could joining Pilat, doing Pilates and twenty four hour fitness. It's almost the same thing. Fear underscore Willie said, "I'm writing a book. It's already two hundred seventy pages and a half way over. Good shit, my man. I'm proud of you, man. I like that." That one guy said, "Most religion is actually very similar." 
MD Nate said, faith should be a personal spiritual journey for yourself without affecting others. No, exactly, man. Exactly. And underscore love 16. Exactly. You shouldn't have to force your beliefs. You shouldn't have to make the whole world understand what you believe. You shouldn't have to force you. You shouldn't have to be like, bruh, you got to believe this. And Tanisia. Oh, that's a sexy man. Tanisia. I love that name. I don't know why I love like the most, the most Negro names in the world. But anyway, shout out to the underscore cowboy. But with that being so, you shouldn't have to feel like you have to force your beliefs on others. You can tell people because you... Like if you're trying to like, if you're trying to tell us, if you're trying to convert somebody to your religion, you should present the information. You know, tell them how this made you feel, but you shouldn't try to force it on them. That's where the issue comes. When you try to force it on people, and then you want to get aggressive because you disagree with what they believe in, then it's that's when I have an issue with it. Denise said, "Hello, well, thank you. Y'all, you're welcome." So that's when I that's when I have an issue with it. That's just that's just my personal opinion about it. At least you said it correctly. That's good I said it correctly the first time because I forgot how I said it. Friend of school only said, my religion is the darker the better. We can only date black girls. <laughs> you can only date black girls. <laughs> What's your religion, man? What's your religion? That one guy said, spread the word of your religion and let the people decide for yourself. So the person who keeps giving me Koda Psalms, I love the hearts. Thank you so much for the hearts. Give me as many hearts as possible. Thank you. I'm Muslim. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I respect, like I said, I respect Muslim, I respect Christian, I respect Buddhist. The only religion, the only religion, the only religion, the only religion I don't respect, the only religion I don't respect is Satanism. That's the only religion I don't respect. I've re- I've I've read the, I've read this I've read the story. It's called Black Entity. <laughs> Black Entity. It's so stupid. Miss Mr. Sabrina sixty nine, how you doing, baby? It's I've I've read about Satanism and I've read it and I just it just is retarded me. First off, I get I get the idea. I get the idea. They're saying that they believe that man is inherently evil, so they feel like they should they should cater to the lower nature and be okay. Thank you, Miss Sabrina, for inviting followers. I appreciate that, baby. That boot cast what's going on with you. I can understand that. I can understand that to a certain extent. But I can't see why you would want to just worship the bad guy. I can't see why you would just want to worship the bad guy in a religion. Like, we all know that the devil's bad. We all know that Satan's evil. I don't know why you would want to join a religion. By the way, we're talking about Satanism right now. I don't know why you want to join a religion and just worship the bad guy off the top. Like, Clam, man, what's up with you, baby? To everybody giving me hearts, I appreciate the love. Miguel 142, what's up with you? I don't know why you want to join a religion just to join the bad guy. It's just terrible. Now... To the other religion that you guys just listed, Scientology, Scientology, I have no issue with Scientology. I have no issue with Scientology because at the end of the day, even Satan is hate. If even Satan is hate Trump, that's what you know is an issue. If even Satan is hate Trump, that's terrible. But I have no issue with Scientology because I don't believe in it. But at the same time, I feel like Scientology, Scientology is literally just a, it's just a, a old, it's the first time you were ever to see, uh, an old school style type of religion develop in modern day. It's the first time you were able to see that Cthulhu isn't Cthulhu a book, but that's what that's what Scientology is. Um, I don't know, isn't that the Vikings religion? Yeah, it's like what the hell? Scientology is the Illuminati. Uh, I don't know. I don't even believe in there. I don't even believe in the Illuminati. I don't even think the Illuminati. First, let me just say this about the Illuminati. I don't even believe the Illuminati is actually like a real thing. I believe there's secret societies out there that do have enough power to influence the world and make changes. But at the same time, I don't believe I don't believe there's actual actual a, a place. I don't think there's an actual organization called the Illuminati. When you go there, Will Smith got Will Smith is right there charging people to to try to enter into fame. Like I don't believe that. I believe the society is kind of similar to that concept. But I don't believe it's called the Illuminati. Shout out to Millie 1395. What's up with you? Shout out to that one guy, 29. <laughs> but yeah, I believe South Park has better political views than most people. That's because they have some talented people. Indy Nay said, have you not seen Da Vinci Code? Illuminati so real? <laughs> well, it might not be called Illuminati, though, since they've been out it. First off, I'll be serious. That's what I was about to say. Who you that? Thank you for saying that. Who you that? Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. I was just about to say that. Let me just say this. If you're a secret society, and how are you a secret society, first off, and everybody knows your freaking name? Like, that's just crazy in and of itself. Like, I don't believe that. That one guy, I find it hard to believe that everything came from nothing. I'm joining, by the way, if that's not clear. 
I'm joining, by the way, if that's not clear. The Illuminati. <laughs> hey, man, if it's a real, if not join, hey, if it's a real thing, if it's a real thing, and you join, I it is what it is. I I don't know. Pablo Escobar, como estás, mis pa- mis am- mi amigo, como estás? But I mean, if you join, man, you know, hey, man, you know, you take that. Man, and I've heard that the rituals to join the Illuminati are a little bit questionable, so I will tell you all about it on Periscope. Okay, I see. Illuminati runs deep. They're controlling the government. Eh, it might be. A D Rock breed. That's the religion of my ancestors. Oh, what's the religion of your ancestors? So it is so secret. I love that voice. Thank you, Pablo. At Shrek, what's up with you, man? What's up with you, man? How you doing? So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, with that being said. Hmm. Yo, good, good. So, I mean, Illuminati might be real or not. I don't know. I remember two years ago, I, was, I remember two years ago, I was at this community college and we were having a debate about, we were having a de- debate about, we are having a debate about, is Chris Brown part of the Illuminati? And this dude was so, this dude was so hell bent on convincing me that Chris Brown had just joined the Illuminati. I was like, bro, like, there's no way in hell. Like, there's no way in hell they chose Chris Brown. Like, there's no way in hell. Beyonce, maybe. But Chris Brown, no. Like, come on now. Like, no, 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 it is impossible. It is literally, it is literally impossible. Like the Jay-Z, like the Jay-Z thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, it was impossible. Like, are there, are there secret, are there societies where when you go in, there's a certain level of power that, it's a certain level of power that people have? Yeah, of course. There's a lot of central cities like that. It's always like that. A free underscore Willie said, how we know Illuminati isn't real because look who is supposed to be in it. Jay Z and Beyonce are definitely in Illuminati. Nah, nah. Is that your voice? Yes, my bro. This is my real voice. This is my real voice. And D Rock Ben said, I can respect that I have that hairstyle. Now, <laughs> what is that you talking about? And shout to Friend of School Willie said, Trump wouldn't have become president. Humans love creating myths. No, exactly. You know what? You know what? Indy Nate, shout out to Indy Nate for saying that. That's true. Humans love creating myths. Humans love creating myths that eventually become religions. That's just natural. Well, you're an aggressive one. Shout out to Abby93. Ragnar haircut. Oh, y'all are talking about Viking culture. At D Rock. That's what y'all talking about, the Viking culture? Who your daughter said Chris Brown has no influence? Chris Brown has influence, but not in this way to always say he should become part of the Illuminati. The hairstyle they have on the show, Vikings. <laughs> y'all talking about Viking culture. Viking culture is the stuff, man. I love no I love no no I love the culture. My favorite, my favorite guy, my favorite guy in that story was, was the guy for some reason, the guy who got his, he got his arm bit, got his hand bit off by the wolf Fenrir, Norse. Norse, I love Are your toes crooked? Ah, uh, no, my toes are not crooked. That's not, a, that's not a new thing. Who had that said? Chris Brown is a loose cannon. Definitely don't want him in. Definitely don't want him in. Desley. Have you been over there? I really want to go. Uh, Desley, shout out to Desley for joining in. Stop for joining in. I'm probably gonna go to any of this podcast, but I think that. Hold on. Hmm. D Rock, I have a beautiful place. Your elbows are ashy on me. I was ain't ashy on it. Oh yeah, I'm on my on my ash. I'm on my ash stuff today right now. Hmm. Bell bags. Excellent. Okay. Hmm. Where I got a passport just to go? I still prefer the Morgan Freeman's voice. <laughs> Stupid. I still prefer Morgan Freeman's voice. Morgan Freeman. You know what? To be honest with you, this is gone. Maybe because I'm being, a, I might be sound like a hitter right now. I don't even like Morgan Freeman's voice like that. Like I think Morgan Freeman's voice is a little bit overrated. Whose voice I loved as a kid growing up. Whose voice I kid I loved growing up was um. The voice of Goliath from Gargoyles. I love that nigga's voice. That dude, he did, he did the voice. He did the voice of Gargoyles. And he did the voice of um, what the hell is that called? Voice of Gargoyles and the voice of the Arbiter in Halo two, three, and four and five. That dude's voice is crazy. I love that dude's voice. Shout out to Jim Farkley said, "Say I like to butter your bread, baby." <laughs> That's not just so weird. D Rock said, "I went to Sweden, but the noise I made last day had control." Hmm. Interesting. Oh man. So I mean, so I don't know. More is there, but more is there, what, what was I even talking about? I got, I lost track. I lost track of thought. 
How much does that room cost? I know you have to be paying or something. No, this room is actually part of the library, bro. This room is actually part of the library, bro. I'll show you. They never charge me. They should. They sh They should. You sound like Obama, except better. They should. They should be charging me because I come here literally every single day. So at this point, they should. They should definitely be charging me. Like it's like just re regular. <laughs> Ball back. Okay, let me tell you this. They can make a profit. They would. Let me tell you this. For those of you guys who keep requesting me to say stuff, the stuff that you request me to say, it has to be something cool. I can't. I'm not going to say something that doesn't sound cool. It got to be something cool. At the underscore red 42, what's going on? We couldn't see anything. Your head was in the way. Oh, my bad. Salon. What's up with you? At Atala Belize, what's going on with you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Luke's, I am your father. Luke, I am your father. At Cut Finger, what's up with you? At Makeup, what's going on with you, baby? What's going on? But yeah, hmm? spit some bars. Spit mm. some bars. Gotta give me a topic. Give me a topic, and I'll think about spitting some bars. Give me a topic to say, and I'll think about spitting the bars. At Amy Lorraine, shout out to Amy Lorraine, sexy name. Shout out to at Queen Mary. At Queen Mary came back, my lovely lady. How you doing? Helicopters. Helicopter cars, helicopters. At McGurk86, what's going on? Shout out to the people joining in right now. Hey. Hey. Hello from the East Bay. Shout out to the East Bay. Shout out to everybody in the East Bay. Shout out to Hayward. Shout out to. What is all in the East Bay? All I know in East Bay is Hayward. Shout out to Hayward. Shout out to, I think, San Luis Obispo. Shout out to all of Oakland. Shout out to Oakland. Shout out to all the people. Shout out to all the people at Pleasanton. Yes. I'm from Alabama. Shout out to Al Oh, I used to live in Alabama. By the way, I'm from Vallejo. My, my lady Amy, I'm from Vallejo. Castro Valley. Shout out to Greenland. Shout out to Greenland. Shout out to Orange Land and Purple Land, too. Your questions need to hit puberty. Nice. Nice. Shout out to everybody. Connie Thomas, what's up with you? What part of Alabama? Ma'am, I lived in Montgomery, Alabama. I really am uncomfortable with living there. It was a terrible place. Terrible place. Ooh, white girls from Alabama. D-Rock, D-Rock, I'm going to tell you right now. You don't want them issues. You do not want those issues. You do not want those issues. You do not want those issues. You don't want women the same skin color as tissue. I'm telling you. Women from Alabama, bro, I'm telling you. Telling you. You're going to have a cape. You're going to have a Ku Klux Klan outside of your house tomorrow. I live in Tuscaloosa. Oh, you know what? I had a friend from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. His brother committed suicide out there. They were doing Russian roulette in the basement out there, and they committed suicide. I remember that. <laughs> Seriously, like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, shout out to Tuscaloosa. Shout out to T-Town. That's what they call it there, T-Town. Jeez, oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a sad history. Shout out to Lauren Moore. What's up with you? What a memory, mate. Oh, yeah, man. I remember. That's a bus kill. Okay, you sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't kill... I didn't kill the buzz here. I'm sorry. Let me make it. Let me make it all happy again. And we're happy again. What's going on? So, what the? How do you do your voice like that? How do I do my voice like that? Um, I open, I open up my mouth and words come out. I open up my mouth and words come out. I don't know how to. I don't know how to tell you this. There, right? I was one day in puberty. Shit happened. Puberty happened to me, and I just next thing you know, it's been like this. Spit bars. Spit bars, spit bars, smooth as lard in the smooth, smooth bars, smith, smooth bar, spit bars, smooth as lard in the cupboard with cooks and cars, cars. Lamborghini is in my dream to possess one day with a young lady named with a young lady named Sabrina at my nice and wood that rest talking about how much progress we have made. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, to the people's paradise. I hope these bars satisfice. What you trying to say? Can't talk shit to an ad. You're irrelevant. Who <laughs> said? <laughs> Let me tell you this. The funny, the, the one thing I do love about doing Periscope is I love it when you guys have conversations with one another and like I'll only, I'll only catch, I'll only catch half the conversation, like what y'all talking about. Like how this dude just said, you're, you're irrelevant to an egg. I was like, what the, f what the hell? You're irrelevant to an egg. What? <laughs> Like, what the hell y'all talking about? <laughs> it's like the funniest thing to me, man. Like, bro, I can't, you know what? I, I really, and I, I keep saying this, I cannot wait, bro, till I get the audience big enough to where I can just start 
I can, I can just start going to different cities, going to Mississippi, going to Texas, going to Jackson, going to all these different places and start doing the podcast live to people. That's the point I really want to get to when I'm doing it live to people. Like, cause we're going to be, you think it's fun now, nigga? We going to, when I actually doing it live in front of people, I can bring all the fun stuff. I can bring the dancers, the microphone, bring my dog for no reason. It's going to be popping. Like the live, the live people's paradise podcast show is going to be popping. Like that's when, that's when it's really going to be on board. Shout out to Putin off for joining, man. What's up with you? I think the first the first spot I'm gonna do it though is probably gonna be somewhere in the bay. Shout out to Swagger thirty seven. What's going on with you? Naishu Udu. Naishu. Even now, like y'all talking a language I've never heard before. Naishu Shu. Y'all. My mic shield broke. Oh, your mic shield broke. Are you a singer? Yay! First the bay. Of course, yeah. Of course the bay first. Are you a singer, rapper, or? Hope I got one. Have to deal with that. I try. There's nothing wrong with that. Sing for us right now. I play piano mostly. Mm. Can you play John Legend's Ordinary People? If you can play John Legend's Ordinary People, I promise that will fall in love. I love that song. Shout out to the Virus One Quest. What's going on with you? Most of the time, they don't have the voice till after. What, what are you talking about? Never try it. I can learn it. What songs do you know for a fact you can play just off the top? Like what songs do you know where I th- like if you walked if you stood in front of a piano right now, if there was a piano in front of you right now, what songs do you know you could just automatically play play uh play right now? Hold on, real quick. Ooh shit. Okay. That was hysterical. Okay. I'll eat you. Oh, who, I'll eat you. Okay, okay. Pablo and who? And Pablo Escobar's and who? Yadada. What the heck are y'all talking about? What are you? What are y'all talking about? I'm curious. <laughs> I don't know. We said I'll eat you. One man shouldn't say. One man shouldn't say that to another grown man. What are y'all talking about? Break it up, kids. Exactly. And by the way, to y'all listening right now, make sure y'all click. They are hating on each other. Make sure y'all click the follow button. Make sure y'all click the follow button. Share to your people. Follow me. Follow me. Dang, what happened? Ah, that's a girl. Oh, that's a girl. I don't. I got a phone call. Oh, now they were arguing about something. One dude told her, "Oh, okay, I'll eat you." Okay, it's a male to a female saying, "I'm gonna eat you." Okay, y'all having that conversation? Okay, then go ahead. And by the way, if if it was male, shout out to Trapped Out Zay. What's up with you, man? Trapped Out Zay, why you trapping so hard? And Jamie King, what's going on with you, baby? Where are you from? Now you can't leave for one second on this thing. That's what. Now that's what makes it fun. That's what makes the podcast fun. And yo, shout out to Jamie King. What's up with you, man? What's do? Where's the bar that? Was the bar that bad? Stop playing Naya and kill it me melt you like ice. What's the? I kick eggs. <laughs> you kick eggs. That's cute. That's cute. I kick eggs. What are you doing? What do you What are you doing right now at Amy Lorene? At Amy Lorene, how did it become acceptable? It's a beautiful song. If you learn that song, if you learn that song, and you can sing. If you learn how to play that song well, I promise you, I will literally fall in love with you. I love that song. At Indy Nate, what song? Um, Ordinary People. There's this song by John Legend. I think it was the song that actually launched Jordan John Legend's career. It's called Ordinary People. Beautiful song. One of the most beautiful songs on the piano I ever heard in my life. Beautiful song. Girl, I'm in love with you. There's a honeymoon. I love that song so much, man. You can't sing, man. I'm learning, man. I'm practicing. I've had that requested a few times. I need to learn it anyway. Shout to Barrier 5100. Yeah. It's too early in the time to be saying E. It's too early in the morning to be saying E. It's too early in the morning for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. That the people that 40 water is back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one guy said you sound like Ja Rule. Ah, damn, I got to get Ja Rule. I got to sound like Ja Rule. Out of everybody you could think of, I sound like. I got to sound like Ja Rule. Can't give me like somebody better than Ja Rule. Ja Rule is like the worst. Ja Rule is like the worst comparison. That is like the worst comparison in the world. Ja Rule, ja Rule sound like. Ja, I don't know. He, and Ja Rule used to have some bangers back in the day, but I just, no, not Ja Rule. 
Run, baby. Run, 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 baby. Like that. That shit was not when John Wu was. Let me just let, first of all, let me just clear, clear up in the nose for y'all. John Wu was. They haven't sold it, bro. For real, like John Wu was never like a. Like well, I remember one nigga tried to tell me. One dude caught on his periscope and tried to tell me you grew up in Cali, lightweight somewhere. At least he doesn't bark. Like yeah, like John. No, John Wu barked. John Wu would do a whole five minutes in a song just barking. <gasps> like, John Wu, John Wu and DMX low key had the same delivery in the song. John, John Wu and DMX were damn near the same person. I would, the only way, the only way I could tell the difference between John Wu and DMX was content matter. They both rapped about getting shot to Darren Harris, my main Darren Harris, what's up with your family? John Wu, John Wu, rap, John Wu would rap gangster stuff too, but most of the time it beat. John Wu was like a terrible Drake. Yeah, if you wouldn't think about it, if you compare them, Ja Rule was like a terrible Drake. Do you know what Ja is short for? I don't know. What was Ja short for? Shout out to the Real Pill Party. Why? Right. I only remember DMX from a movie called Exit Rooms. Really, really, DMX was gangster. Where my dogs at? DMX was gangster. DMX was scary. DMX, DMX was like, DMX, I, bro, DMX was classic. DM, I love DMX. He's younger. Woo! Hey, your dog. Hey, your dog. Hey, your dog. Then a chocolate milk. And then a dog. And then a dog. It would be so serious. But I loved it, though, because his style was his style was so, like, different at the time. Like, his, his style was so creative. But you know DMX is super short. Bro, he is. He is like DMX. He, you know what? I'm going to tell you something about the. I'm going to tell you something. I'm gonna tell y'all I talked about this before. <laughs> it's not the Indy Nady said four foot six. Rough riders. I'm gonna tell you something about about DMX. DMX fit DMX physically fits a stereotype of black dudes that I've always seen my whole life. Everywhere I went, there was always whenever I went to school in whatever neighborhood I lived in, there was always that one hella short black dude. Maybe we hella dark skin, maybe dark skin, hella light skin, hella light skin, hella dark skin with a deep ass voice, and he always be loud as he wouldn't even necessarily have a deep voice, but he always be loud as hell. DMX is like that. Ja Rule is like that. Tax Stone low key is like that. Charlamagne the God is like that. Like all these niggas, all these below five seven niggas with these voices. They'd always walk around school roasting and joking on everybody. I, whenever I went, I always saw them. He's like five five though. Yeah, yeah, you know he's short. He's short, dude. He five five. He thinks. But that's his mystical. Mystical was my boy. Shout out to mystical. My miss mystical. Mystical. I, mystical was cool. I, I, I like that type of style. Like. I like, and shout out to Artem Crazy. What's up with you, man? Where can we join the Periscope? I used to love Mystical. Mystical used to have me weak. <laughs> Amy Lauren is in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bark. <laughs> I respect you just for the fact that you actually took the time to type. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bark, bark. Crazy chick, what's going on? You? The guy from Green Mile? No, the guy from Green Mile was tall as hell. The guy from Green Mile was actually like six foot seven, six foot eight. And he died. Rest in peace to that man, by the way. That was a really talented guy. Darren Harris said, Country Grammar Nelly. You know what? If you think about it, Nelly, Nelly sounded low key a lot like how Fetty Wap sounds. D Rock said, "I hate how the dude from um from Green Mile died." Yeah, that was terrible, man. That was terrible. That is terrible because I think low key a black dude like that existed. I think that some prison that is some random prison down in Mississippi or Chattahoochee, Alabama, there probably was a, a some magical black dude who really could heal people and got put on death row for something he didn't commit. Shout out to Jemalina the singer. Oh, Jemalina, we got a singer on it. We got a singer and we got a piano player. My baby, I want you to spit some bars. And Amy Lorenz said, I said the beans don't burn in the kitchen. <laughs> That's cute. Let's start a band. We can start a band right now. We can start a band. We're gonna we can call it Sounds Like Alabama. Sound like Alabama. <laughs> Sound like Bam. Bean don't burn in the kitchen. Hey, Cruzy Chick said, Hello from Pennsylvania. Hey, shout out to Pennsylvania. My little brother is in jail right now in Harrisburg. You stole my headphones. Hey, you want it back? Imitator, shout out to Emma from coming back. Or guess I'm super cute. Yeah, she's cute. I give her that. I'm a guitarist. Nah, okay. I got a guitar. We got a piano player. We really got. We really gonna have a band popping. We really gonna have a low key periscope band popping. We ain't gonna make no money at all, but goddamn it, it will be something pretty cool. And okay, Kalia, let's do it. I play the tambourine. Who that is? It. I'm a violinist. <laughs> That's cute. I'm a violinist. 
Hey man, y'all, y'all, hey man, hey man. Like, if I DM, if I DM y'all about this band thing, y'all better have some talent. Y'all better have some real talent. I, don't, don't let, don't let y'all turn. Why do you sound? Why do you sound gay? I don't know. Matthew Brain. Why y'all better? Y'all better have some talent. Our singers behind the mic now. <laughs> only, only song I'm gonna be singing is Cruise Boat. Them Cruise Boat love songs. I've got a fever, and the only remedy is more is a cowbell. Because you're gay. Shout out to D Rock for having my back. D Rock gonna low key be my bodyguard in a minute. D Rock, he had my back. I mean, you look hot. Oh, thank you. Okay. We can tolerate that comment. I can play anything with streams. Thanks, Felicia. Go, go, Karami. Go, Karami. I don't know what that means. All right. We'll see. Oh, um, gee, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Shout out to D Rock. D Rock gonna low key be my bodyguard in a minute. Every dude I see who got his biceps in the photo, that's going to be my bodyguard. And Anne Lorraine said, my name is not Felicia. He doesn't, Amy, he doesn't understand that reference. Uh, he doesn't understand that reference. Yolanda Forbes said, how are you? I'm doing pretty fine, Yolanda. Yolanda, Yolanda Adams and Forbes. How you doing? In my language. And mine is not Daniel. Hmm. Wasn't trying to offend, just don't like people coming and disrespecting. I respect, no, thank you. I appreciate the love. I really appreciate that. Good. You're doing good. You're not blessed. We have a good time here. Yeah, thank you. We have a good time. We have a good time laughing and talking about why why Ja Rule didn't make it. You said P word. I swear I will, I will allow it. Show t- it. Show tits. Hey, hey man, Hackman 22, chill out. At Hackman, I don't know how to say his name correctly. Chill out. Can you talk normally? Can I talk normally? This is me talking normally. I don't know. I don't know. This is me talking normally. I don't know what they go from here. <laughs> I don't know where to go. But I don't know where to go from here. This is me talking normally, bro. <laughs> I don't know, Mike. I'm gonna see. If, I'm gonna see. How, I have uh, OMG. I can't try to see. I'm gonna try to. I can't. I can't project. Let me see if I can project a little bit. And now, now we are here right now, talking right now on the time. Can you change your time to normal? Can you change your time to normal? Can you change your time to normal? And now, and now we are projecting right now, live on the Periscope. And then I go back to normal. And then I go back to normal and live my life. Soft-spoken. Uh, his screen name is Military Time. Oh, my screen name is Military? Really? I didn't know that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what? You know why I was like that, though? It's because, um, probably because, I don't know why it's like that, actually. I don't know why it's like that. I don't know that's what it is. But, student, 14 more minutes. No, not yours. No, not yours. Shout out to Illy Vanilli. Illy Vanilli, what's up? Please don't tell me this is a white guy, Knight. This is a white guy. H-Man said, Amy Lauren, will you marry me? Oh, that is so cute. And hey, Yolanda Forbes, thank you. Make sure you follow me. Make sure you click the follow button. Mate, put some song on. Hackman, that's cute. Millie Tom is all I use. I'm a cop, so used to it. Oh, you're a cop? Oh, you're a cop. D-Rock, you see why I, D- D-Rock, you see why I said don't talk to her? You see why I said don't talk to her? White girl from Alabama and she a cop. That's what I'm talking about. Yolanda Forbes said, I'm single. I am. I'm a cop. I'm a cop, you idiot. Amy, uh, can you dance for us? You know what? I almost kicked you off, but I'm wait. I almost kicked you off, Amy, but I'm waiting for that rendition of John Legend's Ordinary People to come on. I'm waiting for that. Until that comes on, you're allowed to stay. Shout out to Slutty self if it was going on. It's from Kindergarten Cop. Oh, you get it, got it up. I love, I love that movie. You have a nice voice. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm not a cop. No, I love Kindergarten Cop. That was a good movie. That was the movie that made me want to purchase a ferret. To this day, I still have not bought a ferret. I really, I really want to buy a ferret. Making you dance, please. I ain't no dancing here. I ain't no dance. Which I can't. I can dance my ass off. By the way, don't. I can dance. Let's keep it real. But I was just quoting Kindergarten Cop. Why did you almost kick me off? All right. Tell you what, do another, do another, do another kindergarten cop. That was me too. <laughs> break dance. No, I'm not gonna break dance. I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm not gonna break dance. I can, I, I can pop lock and I can glide, but I can't break dance. Zerfi, what's up with you? It's not a thuma. It's not a thuma. I remember that. It's not a thuma. I'm, that was funny. That's only that, and you know what's funny? That quote is only that quote is only funny because he can't speak English right. If he was just speaking, it's not a tumor. But it wouldn't have been funny. But because he can't speak English right, it's not a tumor. Now it's funny. 
At QE098, what's going on with you? Where are you? I am in the library. Get to the chopper now! <laughs> Dude, I was talking about earlier how we elected Donald Trump and how it made no sense, but I also remember that I live in the state. I'm a, I'm a proud resident of the state where we actually elected the Terminator, the T-1000, to be our governor, and I'll never forget that. Predator, great movie. That's a great movie. I still cannot believe we really elected our Arnold Schwarzenegger to be the governor of, the, of California, and he actually won. Like he actually won. I still can't believe that. Right? Like it is just weird, but you know that one guy is doing said, I don't like Trump, but I hated Hillary. I don't like Trump, and I didn't really take to Hillary that much. I didn't really take the Hillary that much, but you know, um, I think the I think the main reason why hmm, your point is, babe. I think I actually think Hillary Clinton is running for I think Hillary Clinton is running for mayor of New York right now. Which, if she does win, you know who helps? Hakeman said, "Who hates Trump? He burnt the mosque. He burnt the mosque." I don't know about that, but it is. It is. Man, it is. I think, well, I think the general, cons- I think the general consensus of most good people is we don't like Trump. And it's funny for like the last two to three weeks, you see more and more people drop out and say how they they regret voting for Trump. Which you know, it's too late now. You already put the motherfucker as leader of the free world right now. That one guy, 29, said Trump was a lesser of two evils. Yeah, I think it was the other way around. I really think it's the other way around. And Amy Loreen said, we make the best of what we have. Yeah, we do. You know, if we got if we got rotten cookie dough, we still got to make we still gotta make cookies. Well, no, if we got rotten cookie dough, we just throw a cookie dough out. If we got chocolate chip cookie dough, but we want macadamia chocolate chocolate chip cookie dough, we just got to make chocolate chip cookie dough. But I don't know what we're going to do in this situation. Shout out to Kalim Bawas. Because this dude, you know, for all the controversy you've seen in the news with the Muslim ban, with the ban on abortion, I always keep thinking, he only been in office for three to four years. That one guy said, everybody has their own opinions, so I can respect yours. Okay, see, and that's what I like. We can have conversation and respect each other's opinion. That's what I like. And it's compared to, what's up with you? I just like to eat cookie dough. Dude, you know what? I love to eat raw cookie dough. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I really do enjoy eating raw cookie dough. I do love enjoy. I do. I don't know why. It's really bad. I had cookies in a while, actually. So good, right? It's really good. You know, I'm hungry now. Now, D Rock said, "Ha, ah, cookie dough is a bomb, bro. Cookie dough is a bomb. Oh, there's never nothing wrong with eating cookie dough. That's like, like my f- top five desserts. My top five desserts are cookie dough, brigadero, acai, Reese's peanut butter ice cream." And my banana dark chocolate surprise. Those are my five favorite. Those are my five favorite desserts. Matter of fact, the very first time I go to one of y'all cities and I do a live Periscope podcast, I'm going to bring my dark chocolate surprise. A D-Rock Ben said, number one is red velvet cake for me. Red velvet cake is good. My aunt makes the best red velvet cake. I'm going to suggest a new mystery chip favor. I've never tried that before, Amy. Dana Summer joins. Shout out to Dana Summer. Man, it reminds me of Buffy Summers from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And D-Rock agree with you 100%. I love Red Velvet Cake. I love Red Velvet. Red Velvet was good, man. Red Velvet was always the bomb. Okay, take it. Let's do it a step further. Which one? Which one tastes better? Red Velvet Cake or... I can't think of no other cakes besides Red Velvet Cake, actually. Shit, Red Velvet Cake or Rock Cookie Dough? Which one would you rather eat? Red, Vel- Red Velvet Cake or Rock Cookie Dough? Call me weird, but my favorite is Carrot Cake with Cream Cheese Feeling. Okay, I'm going to call you weird, and I'm going to also say that my favorite cake is Cheesecake. I love, love, love key- Cheesecake. I love Cheesecake. Cheesecake is the best cake I don't care. Yeah, chocolate cake is cool too, but cheesecake is an absolute. Cheesecake is a pinnacle of good food. Cheesecake is an absolute pinnacle of good food. If you want to eat a, if you want some food, hey, hey, little buddy. If you want some, hey, how's it going? If you want some food that actually tastes great, 
Cheesecake is more of a pie than cake. No, it's more of a pie. It's more of a pie, and it's more than it's more than a pie. It's more than a cake. It's 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 heaven on earth. It's heaven on earth, right? Huh? It's heaven. Like, oh my god, I love cheesecake. I think the, I think the best. That's the best dessert. I think that's the best dessert. Cheesecake. The best dessert is cheesecake. D Rock said that that one guy. My second will be lemon meringue pie. Is my second. Lemon meringue is good. Lemon meringue is great too. Lemon meringue is the best too. Lemon meringue. Angel food cake is great. I haven't had angel food cake in a while. I haven't. Never, I don't even know if I remember. have. I ever eaten angel food cake? This sounds like something I would eat, but I've never. I've never had it before. Never. But I, I imagine it probably tastes good. I imagine it probably tastes good. But. As we all sit here being fat and talking about the food that we know she we should be eating, coconut pie. I have not tried coconut pie. That sounds good. Shout out to what's Gucci. German chocolate. What's going on? German chocolate. German chocolate is a good one. I like German chocolate too. You look like more. You look like Morgan Freeman. That is a new one. I have not. I never gotten. I never got to look like Morgan Freeman, but I guess that's a compliment. But Morgan Freeman. But shout out to German chocolate food cake. That's good too. I want some good. I want some good. I want some good food, bro. I ain't had. I ain't had. I ain't had some. I'm. I've been doing all my home cooking. I might go out and eat some tonight if I, if I just, before I go to work. But what are y'all planning for Saturday? Now that I think about it, before I leave, because I actually got to leave in about fifteen. I got twenty more minutes on the Periscope, then I got to go. But what are y'all? Oh, no, shit, let me see. Yeah, I gotta go. You impressionist? No, I'm working right now. Lazy Saturday. D Rock is working. D Rock is really making some money right now. Shout out to my man. If y'all want to get, if y'all want to get a workout, if y'all want to get a workout plan and lose weight, if y'all want to look sexy, the sexy for June and July, talk to that man right there. At that one guy, I plan on going fishing. Oh, you go fishing? Oh, that's cool. That's the one thing I do miss about girls from Alabama. Is they they're so they do such normal stuff. Like they do stuff that I could actually see myself doing. I hate fishing, but I still like that you still do. I still approve that you still do normal stuff like go fishing. Like it's still it's still cool to me. I do like I do like that. There there is a significant like I would there is a significant difference. It's funny, like there is a real big difference between girls from Alabama and girls from from, from uh California. And you know, there is a difference. They go mudding, they go fishing, go hunting, all kinds of cool stuff. Oh yeah, they do. Girls from Alabama, they got their own vibe. They go, they they're more down home, they're more country. See girls, see girls from Alabama. Girls from Alabama do more. Most girls from Alabama do wife stuff good naturally. It underscores somebody what's up with you. Like for example, most girls from Alabama, they know how to cook good. They know how to cook good. They do a lot of stuff. And D Rock said in the Navy, I met the finest redhead from Alabama. Really. Weird. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's different. Is Alabama and Africa? Well, okay, whatever. So anyway, so it's, it's di- it is a different vibe there. Like most women in Alabama, they know how to do the household things nicer. They know how to do the household things greater. She was thick. Oh yeah, man. Let me tell you about Alabama. Alabama also says D Rock said thick. Alabama has the thickest women. Alabama has the th- has the thickest women out of. Alabama, Georgia, if you even go down south in general, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Texas, Louisiana have the thickest women in the country. This is what they have the thickest women. They got the thickest head because they got the thickest cornbread. They eat the they eat fried chicken with gravy every single day since they was five. So, of course, they're going to have the thickest hips and all of that. Now, even the, even with all those compliments that I just gave, I will be all the way honest with you. I still prefer at J.J. Manny was going on with you. I still prefer. I don't know. I mean, I was I was going to say I was going to say that I still prefer women from California, but I can't even say if I say that because I think all I think all of them just have I think all of them just have all women all women from each region from each ethnic group they have their own thing that they do better. Like, well, as good as I prefer women from Antarctica, that's cool. Like for me personally, like, I, I don't know. Mozzarella sticks was going on with you. I like girls from California, particularly girls from Southern California, because I think, like in the regular day to day activities that I do, I think we could relate in. Yo, son, that one guy said, I don't like bean poles. I got to have some meat on the bones. 
No, it's not even like that. I mean, I prefer men from the Caucasus Mountains. No, it's not even. That's not even so much as the means. Like I don't even because I don't even. I don't really like. I like women who are a little bit thick. As, but I will say I like to feel women sometimes who are a little bit thick. But I will say that in my experience, most of the stuff that I like to do, only skinny women like to do. Like. Most thick women don't like to jog. I'm sorry. It is, it is what it is. That's a stereotype, and I know it's messed up. But most most thick women don't like to don't like to jog. Most thick women don't like to go mountain climbing. Most thick women don't like to go dance for four or five hours and then go to In and Out and then go jog five miles because you feel ashamed of how bad you ate. Like most thick women don't like to do that. Particularly thick black girls. You don't want a thick woman. No, I do. It just I don't know. It is the parents. Like that, and I've been thinking about that lately too. Like, I've been thinking about lately, like who's gonna who's gonna be the type of woman that I marry when I get older? Like, who's gonna be the type of woman that I settle down with? I'm always thinking about that. I always, I always think about that now. It is, it is, it is crazy. So I'm always wondering if you want to say fast, say it with a chest. I think, no, no. It's funny because my mom always tell me. They can say the words Gucci said. Thick women will terrorize you. That one guy said, see, I'm not into all that either. I prefer the stereotypical redneck stuff. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Um, I don't know, man. My mom is funny because my mom always, my mom has always told me since I was a kid that I'm going to bring home a white girl. She's always told me since I was a kid, I'm gonna bring home a white girl. You go, you gonna bring home a white girl. You gonna bring me some white girl. And I was like, Mom, like, why are you automatically assume I'm gonna bring home a white girl? You know, I, like, why are you, why are you just automatically assume that? I, I like, I first off, I love white women. I love black women. I love all women from everywhere. I love women from all around the world. But damn it, son of a bitch! Seven house. Okay, so my phone died where I was getting the people's comments from from Periscope. But thank you so much, thank you so much for listening right now. Thank you so much for participating in the podcast. Gonna have to cut it off, but thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being a part of the family. With that being said, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the family. It's always the best. We will live long, peace, and soul.